they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever, grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. Notice how many times he uses the word truth. Book of Third John. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if they bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, they shall do well, thou shalt do well. Because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such, that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. I wrote unto the church, but the atrophies who loveth to have the preeminence among them receiveth us not. Wherefore, as I, as if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, praying against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Demetrius hath good report of all men, and of the truth itself. And we also bear record, and you know that our record is true. I, <laughs> I have many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee, our fathers salute, our friends salute thee, greet the friends by name. Let's pray, Father, thank you again for this wonderful book that we have in front of us, this perfect book. Please help us to open our hearts to what you have to say to us, because it is the truth. Help us to accept it and to put it into practice in our lives. Thank you again for your great, amazing love toward us. Help us to love you back by hearing what you have to say from your word this morning. If there's anybody here who does not know your son is their Savior, whether they're sitting in this service or downstairs with the kids, help them to open their hearts to the truth of how to go to heaven and to be willing to at least give it a hearing and listen to what the truth is about how to go to heaven so they can have a chance to be saved today. Help the Christian who's, who's away from God to come back to you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> I hope you are living your life that way in awe of God. That's the way it ought to be. Okay, we're going to talk today, this morning, from these two books of the Bible, these little books, about the truth. A good, I'm going to talk about a good report of the truth itself. A good report of the truth itself. And I'm going to hopefully get you to see the importance of this, <clears throat> the importance of truth and uh, if you can throw aside all your opinions, uh, all your feelings, and just focus on the word truth, that will help you so much to lay a good, solid base uh, for living the Christian life. Uh, in fact, you know, our, our foundation is Jesus Christ, and what does the Bible call him? The truth. And the book we use to guide us is the Bible, which the Bible calls the truth. And so we're going to talk about the truth itself this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for this uh, <clears throat> truth we're going to talk about this morning. Lord, a blessing it is to have this and to, to not be, we don't have to be confused. We don't have to wonder about things. We know exactly what the truth is about every subject there is to know about as far as life on this earth. Help us to accept that and to go with what you say, to stand with you as you stand with truth. How important truth is to you, Lord, help it to be that important to us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> now, I want you to listen carefully this morning, and this is not a typical, I guess, a typical Sunday morning message, although it should fit any time because it's the Word of God. But um, I want you to listen carefully this morning because I, I want to give you a good report of the truth. I'm a fundamentalist, and I wouldn't change because it's the truth. Years ago, I came to a crossroad in my Christian life. One way was what we would call the New evangelical way, that to me is simply a watered-down Christian way of approaching life. The other way was Baptist fundamentalism. New evangelicals believe in any kind of Bible. Fundamentalists believe in the King James Bible. New, new evangelicals believe in being saved by inviting Christ into your life. Fundamentalists believe in realizing you are a sinner headed for hell, and the only hope is Jesus <clears throat> dying for your sins, by, and buying the gift of eternal life for you and rising from the dead, and you must call on him and receive him as your Savior and your only hope for heaven. New evangelicals believe that Jesus 
that Jesus' blood is in the ground at the foot of the cross and is not necessary for the forgiveness of sins. Fundamentalists believe the blood of God the Son is on the mercy seat in heaven and that without the shedding of God's blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. New evangelicals believe in lifestyle evangelists. That means you live your life in front of people and smile a lot, and one day somebody will walk up to you and say, why are you smiling a lot? And we're, what's going on in your life? That's how they believe that you are to witness to somebody. Fundamentalists believe in confronting someone one-on-one about their eternal destination. We call it lifestyle soul winning. <clears throat> New evangelicals believe in a freedom to dress and live like the world. Fundamentalists believe in dressing and acting like a Christian. That's logical, isn't it? New evangelicals believe in music that sounds like what you'd hear in a nightclub or on a secular radio station, but putting religious words to it to make it sound Christian. Fundamentalists believe in a good old-time music that gets to the heart instead of the senses and the foot, where it thrills your spirit instead of your body. So as I looked at both directions to take, I chose Bible-based fundamentalism for one reason. It is the truth. It is the truth. The definition of the word truth means fact or reality. My definition of the word truth is one word, B-I-B-L-E. That is truth. All right? Now, I, I, won't, I want to say this. We don't have much truth anymore. And let me say this. If you want to get the pure, untarnished truth in Furcrest, Washington, you got to come to a little church on the corner of Dart- Dartmouth and Alameda with a hellfire and damnation little old preacher uh, with a King James Bible. Don't say, don't laugh at that. One day you're going to be old and I'll laugh at you. Anyway, <laughs> this is it, folks. Thank God this morning that truth is the theme of our church. It is the theme of the book of 2nd and 3rd John. Seven times in 14 verses in 3rd John, he mentions the word true or truth. And I want to stick up for the truth and give a good report of it this morning. It's being slandered, ridiculed, twisted, and denied today, and I want to defend it. I want to give a good report of the truth itself. Now, <clears throat> there is a lot of falsehood. Uh, there's a flood of falsehood in our society today. Go to Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Romans chapter 1 and verse 25. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. It says here about a group of people who changed the truth of God into a lie. And that's what's happening in our society today. People are changing the truth of God into a lie. In order to do that, you've got to change it. Why? Because it's the truth. So you have to change, and that's what they're doing. They're actually taking the truth of God and twisting it and changing it. One of the reasons why we have all these false versions out. Isaiah 59, 14. The ju- and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. You see, they've changed the truth of God into a lie, and truth has fallen. There are no absolutes. You know, even when it comes to Christianity, uh, there are no right, a lot of, most things are not right and wrong. There's so many gray areas and all that kind of stuff, and that's just a bunch of baloney. As far as I'm concerned, there's just been a flood. And, and the more we accept that kind of teaching, the more uh, falsehood is going to flood into uh, Christianity. And it's really sad. Uh, in Christianity and in the, uh, today, there are all kinds of false accusations. Paul was falsely accused in the New Testament, and Christians are falsely accused today. For instance, preachers are being accused uh, of for being in it for the money, All right? And that I think I find that so amusing, being in it for the money. I mean, you know, uh, you give your life, you give, you, you spend uh, four years of Bible college, and 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 I mean, just hour after hour of studying, hour after hour of serving in a ministry, hour after hour of working a secular job to pay for your bills. And then you go and you make $100 a week with a wife and a, and a little girl and one on the way. And I'm in it for the money. You know, I, I don't, I don't, honestly, I do not know, I, have, I don't know of a preacher that I know personally that's in it for the money. But yet we're accused of being that way. I, I think I told you this story a while back uh, when I was pastoring in Missouri. We met in a clubhouse of a trailer park. I wish I had enough pictures to show you the inside and out of it. It was, it was a clubhouse of a trailer park. 
All right. And when I went to visit this guy one time, he walked, he got, I went to visit this guy that was visiting our church. Well, one of his relatives was at his house when I was visiting him, and this relative walked up to me and got right in my face. I never met this guy before in my life. And he started screaming at me, you preachers are in it for the money. Well, I wanted to laugh at him. I wanted to laugh at what he was saying. I don't remember what kind of year vehicle I had, but I guarantee it was older than the one he drove. You know, and, and, and we, were meeting, we were meeting in this gorgeous, beautiful building. We were meeting in a clubhouse of a trailer park. By the way, it had mice in it. See, I mean, it, it, was, it was not, we kept it as nice as we could inside and out. But on the side of the, of the trailer of the clubhouse was a garage. And in the garage were all the, the workers' uh, machines and, and, and uh, vehicles that they used to keep the trailer park up. And a lot of times in our parking lot, there'd be these big backhoes parked in our parking lot. I mean, that's what we were meeting in. And we were in it for the money. There's just a lot of false accusations like that. Members being accused of obeying the preacher instead of God and lifting him up above God. All kinds of false accusations like that. And by the way, all false if they are made about us. I'll tell you that for sure. There are false churches. The kind that don't believe in Bible salvation. The kind that baptize for salvation. The kind that baptize babies. The kind that baptize by sprinkling. <clears throat> the kind that believe in the Bible, but don't go soul winning. That's a false church. The kind that has deacon rule instead of pastoral authority. That's a false church. The kind that believes you can lose your salvation. That's a false church. You see, there's all kinds of false confidences. People are putting their confidence in a lot of false uh, things. For instance, people are putting their confidence in our government to pay our bills and put food in our mouth and give us jobs. People are putting confidence in psychiatrists and psychologists to help them with their problems. People are putting their confidence in our jobs to pay our bills instead of God. A lot of false confidences. There are a lot of false professions. People who say they are saved, but they're not. By the Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. But these people who say they're saved have no desire for church, no desire for the Bible, no desire for serving, serving God, and they're never broken about their sin. They never feel guilty about their sin. People who say they are disciples, surrendered Christians, but are not. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. I want to ask you this morning, do you love people if you're, if you're slandering them? Do you love people if you let them go to hell without trying to stop them? Do you love people if you don't pray for them? A lot of false professions. There's a lot of false prophets or preachers. People who say they are preachers of God. Why don't you take your Bible go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Our world is being flooded with this stuff. Our world is being flooded with things that are false. Jeremiah, and people that are false. Jeremiah 23, verse 14 through 16. I have, also, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Wow, what a thing to be compared to, Sodom and Gomorrah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and, and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They speak they make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. A lot of prophets around, preachers, preachers around like that. Verse 17, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come unto you, upon you. Wow. Then go to verse 21. Uh, it says, I have not sent them these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from the evil way and from the, their, the evil of their doings. And then verse 25, it says, I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. 
the prophet hath, that hath, hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. You see, but again, there are many people that are speaking the word of God faithfully. There's a lot of these false prophets around. I'm talking about, for instance, women preachers. False prophets. Women preachers are false prophets. Amen? They are. The Bible is against women preachers. 1 Timothy 2, 11 and 12. 1 Timothy 3, 12. They prof there's preachers that profess to know God, but in their very works they deny Him. They believe in God, but no salvation. They believe in a God, but no Bible. They're false prophets, false preachers. There are false religions, cults, all kinds of cults all over the place. It's not just they have their beliefs and we have ours. Don't hold, don't believe that. It's, it's this. They have falsehood and we have the truth. And don't be ashamed of that. Don't be ashamed to say we have the truth. We have the truth. Now, here's the thing. I don't, I don't feel, if somebody says to me, are you going to a true, true, a true church? Absolutely. Because I can base what we believe on the word of God. I'm not ashamed to say that. You say, are you saying any church that disagrees with your church is a false church? No, what I'm saying is any church that disagrees with the Bible is a false church. You see? Now, <clears throat> there's a lot of false religions. And we need to stand by the fact that we have the truth and we, uh, they have things that are false. I'll get to that later, more later. False worship. There's false worship going on. I'm talking about public worship in church services and private worship. Churches, even fundamental churches, have Sunday morning worship services instead of preaching. They're de-emphasizing the preaching of the Word of God and emphasizing music and other things, uh, dramas and things like that. They worship people, worship God for one or two or three hours on Sunday, and whatever you feel like doing, and then they make a nominal effort to live the Christian life during the week. That's false worship. Then there's false witnesses. People put forth a false testimony of what Christianity really is, what being a Christian really is. They may talk about the Lord, but show no, no outward change as a result of the inward that happened when they got saved. So people see no difference between us and them, so they don't think they need what we have. Remember, man does look on the outward appearance. Boy, I use that verse so many times about, about, about God looks on the heart, man looks on the outward appearance. But don't forget, we stress on God looks on the heart, but we forget about man looks on the outward appearance. <clears throat> What he sees, what that person sees me do is really important. My, my actions speak louder than my words, for sure. So there's a lot of this false stuff going all over the place. And, and so I want to tell you what we need in America is we need a flood of truth if America is to be spared. We need a flood of truth in our church, and we need a flood of truth in our lives. We've got to have that. Psalm 115, Psalm 115, verse 1. Psalm 115 and verse number 1. The Bible says, Not to us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name. Give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. We need to have this in our lives. If the world is, if America is to be spared and the world is to be reached, we've got to have a flood of truth. Now, maybe you don't appreciate it. Maybe you that were raised in a church, a, a true church, you don't appreciate it like maybe some of us who were raised in false churches. But boy, when you are raised in a false church and then you get the truth, you're excited about the truth. Man, this stuff is real. This stuff is not religion. This is not a fable. This is truth. Now, let's just look at the logic of truth. Go to Psalm 119, verse 30. Psalm 119, verse 30. And again, I told, gave you the definition of truth. It means fact or reality. And then I told you my definition is the Bible. The definition of truth is the Bible. The Bible is truth. Now, in Psalm 119 and verse 30, it says, Psalm 119 and verse 30, <clears throat> David said this. He said, uh, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have chosen the way of truth. That's just, isn't it just logical to, to choose the way of truth? Why, why, would you, why would you be willing to be wrong when you can be right? Think about that. Why would you want to sit here and believe the wrong thing when you can have the right thing to believe? You see, that's why David said, I have chosen the way of truth. I have looked at all this false stuff. I have looked at the truth. I have chosen the way of truth. Isn't that logical? Doesn't that make sense? 
I mean, okay, think about that. So we have up here uh, a $1,000 bill that's genuine. We have up here on this side a $1,000 bill that's counterfeit. How many of you would walk up here? You have your choice, take either one. You'd walk up and take the counterfeit one. You'd say, well, that'd be dumb. Why would I want something that's false and fake when I could get something that's real, that's true? It's the same with life. The same with uh, everything about God. There's false things about God. There's false things about Christianity. There's false things about life. And there's true things about God and Christianity and life. You have your choice to choose either one. Why would you want the false. You see? Now, go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 5. Galatians chapter 2, verse 5. I'm going to make it practical. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 5. <clears throat> Paul said this, To whom we gave place by subjection, know not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now, <clears throat> why do I believe the way I do? Okay? Because of what Galatians 2.5 says, it's the truth. The tr I believe the gospel because it's the truth. The truth of the gospel. We are saved because of the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why would I want to believe anything else other than the truth? Boy, especially when it comes to how to get to heaven. Well, I believe it because it's the truth. I believe salvation because it's the truth. John 3, 3, Jesus said, you must be born again. Acts 16, 31, the question was asked, Paul the Apostle, sirs, what must we do to be saved? And the answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Why do I believe in salvation? Why do I believe in, in this way to heaven through Jesus Christ and him only? Why do I believe that? Why am I holding on to it? Why am I depending on it for my eternal destiny? Because it's truth. It is truth. And I'll tell you what, that ought to thrill your soul. You have the true way to heaven. The only way to heaven. The only way. To, there are all kinds of roads to heaven, according to the world. But you're on the true road. You went the road. If you went the way of Jesus Christ, you have the true way to heaven. There is no other way. You have the true way. Uh, um, why do I believe in obedience to the King James Bible? Because it's the truth. Psalm 12, 6, and 7, God promised to preserve his words and every word he preserved. So I have to have every word of God. And that's why I believe in absolute commitment and obedience to the King James Bible because it's the truth. I believe in women dressing like women and men like men and modesty and Christ-likeness in our appearance. Why? Because it's the truth. That's why. I, Deuteronomy 22, 1 Timothy chapter three, chapter 2. Rather. I believe if you don't go soul winning, you're not right with God. Why? Because it's the truth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I believe you don't go to church whenever the doors are open and, you're not, uh, and, you, and you, you could go, but you don't go. You're not right with God because it's the truth. Hebrews 10, 25. I believe mixed swimming is satanic and leads to lust because it's the truth. Psalm 101, verse 3, and Matthew 5, 28, where Jesus said, a man cannot even look at a woman to lust after her in her heart. I believe drinking alcohol is a sin. Why? Because it's the truth. Proverbs chapter 23. I believe if you won't tithe, won't tithe, you're a crook and are not right with God because it's the truth. Malachi chapter 3. Now, why, why, why do I believe these things? Why do I believe a preacher, when he preaches, we should tithe? Because it's the truth. That's why. Go to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 21. Proverbs 22, verse 21. The Bible says here, Proverbs 22, verse 21. This is what, what Solomon said here. I, may make, I might make thee known, watch this, know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. You see that? The certainty of the words of truth. I can stand up and say what I'm saying this morning with all confidence, with all certainty. Why? Because it's the truth. That's why. And I may make thee know, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse number 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 10, it says, The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Why do I believe a preacher, when he preaches, that we ought to dress right? Because it's the truth. 
That's why. Why do I believe a preacher when he preaches from the Word of God? It's a sin to be naked, to run around half naked or nine tenths naked in our society today because it's the truth. That's why. Why do I believe it's, it's uh, the preacher when he says it's a sin to commit adultery? It still is a sin to commit adultery or fornication. Why? Because it's the truth. That's why. Why do I believe it's a sin to when a preacher says it's a sin to kill babies that, uh, and it's that's murder? Uh, abortion is murder. Why? Because the Bible. Says so. It's the truth. That's why Psalm 139. Why do I believe it when the preacher says there's a hell? Because it's the truth. That's why Luke chapter 16. Why do I believe that a Christian ought to go soul winning, ought to try to tell people about Jesus Christ and his salvation? Why do I believe it when a preacher tells me that? Because it's the truth. That's why Matthew 28. Why do I believe a Christian ought to pray every day? And when a preacher says you ought to pray, why do I believe that? Because it's the truth. That's why Leviticus 18. Why do I believe that homosexuality is an abomination to God and it's a satanic lifestyle? Why do I believe that when a preacher preaches that? Because the Bible says so. It's the truth. That's why Leviticus 18.22. Why do I believe that any other kind of sexuality except husband and wife is of the devil and wicked? Why do I believe that when a preacher preaches that? Because it's the truth. That's why Exodus chapter 20 and Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Do I believe all this? Listen to me. Do I believe all this and much more because a man says it? Do I believe all this and much more because the denomination says it? Do I believe all this and much more because I'm religious? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I believe all this because it's the truth. That's why. Amen. And I have chosen the way of truth. Now listen to me. Then since false is the opposite of truth, isn't it true that any preacher who doesn't believe this is a false preacher? Since false is the opposite of truth, isn't it true that any preacher who doesn't believe this uh, is a, or any church that doesn't believe this is a false church? Isn't it true that if false is the opposite of truth, then any Christian who doesn't believe this is a false Christian? You see, let's lift up the truth. Let's forget about our feelings. Forget about our logic, our worldly logic. Forget about all this stuff the world tries to shove down our throat. Remember, the Bible says truth is fallen in the streets. Forget about all that, and let's get back to the truth. Now, let me give you, I gave you the logic of truth. Let me give you the value of truth. The, the, the Bible says that truth is precious. Psalm 119, verse 72. Psalm 119, verse 72. The Bible says here, Psalm 119, verse 72, The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. The law of thy mouth being the word of God, which is truth, is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Verse 127 of Psalm 119, Therefore I love thy commandments above gold. Yeah, but fine gold. It is so precious. I wouldn't trade truth for anything. I wouldn't sell it for any price. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not. Tell you what, in all the religions of the world, in all the philosophies of life, I'm so glad I am right in the center of truth. I don't have to wonder, are we right and they're wrong? I know God's right. And if I line up with God, then I'm right. If I line up with God, I line up with the truth. See, God said it is so valuable, it should be at the center of our lives. Ephesians 6, 14. God said we are to walk in his truth. In Psalm 26, verse 3. Psalm 26 and verse 3. Listen to what it says. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. And, and we've just read in 2 John and verse 4, where John said, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. Psalm 86, verse 11. Psalm 86, verse 11. It says here, Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. We are to walk. We are to live in 
his truth. Listen, if I've got to get up and live a 24-hour day, uh, seven-day-a-week week, and if i got to live a 30-day or 31-day month, and I've got to live a 365-day year, and I've got to live a so many year lifespan, I don't want to live each day wasting my life following things that aren't true. I want to follow things that are true. And I have it. I have it. So therefore, I want to walk before God in truth. Isaiah chapter 38 and verse number 3. Isaiah chapter 38 and verse number 3. I'm so thankful when I get up tomorrow morning, I can live the truth. I'm not living a lie. I can live truth. Isaiah 38 verse 3. And said, remember now, Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. Hezekiah was saying that. Listen. Walking in truth brings so many eternal riches to my future. Let me give you not only <clears throat> truth's logic and truth's values, let me give you truth's enemies. Let me give you truth's enemies. <clears throat> Satanic helpers who try to keep people from accepting the truth and being saved and then living the truth and being happy. Those are the enemies we have to face. I'm talking about false religions. I'm talking about false Bibles. I'm talking about false preachers. I'm talking about false philosophies. We have people that are just wicked. They just don't think truth is important at all. They won't speak it. They won't obey it. They won't receive it. They resist it. <clears throat> Their minds are corrupt because they lack the truth. I'll give you Jeremiah 9, 5, 2 Thessalonians 2, 10, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and verse 8. We must serve the God of truth, not man. Okay, we must serve the God of truth, not man. <clears throat> we will make enemies as we tell the truth. Go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 16. We're going to make enemies. If I tell you the truth, there are going to be enemies. Truth has enemies. Galatians chapter 4, verse 16 says, Paul said, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Listen, if I'm going to be your enemy, if one day you're going to look at me as your enemy, I want it to be, not because of the way I treated you. I want it to be for one reason only. Because I told you the truth. And you couldn't take it. You couldn't take it. But truth has enemies. There may be people sitting here right now that are totally resisting what I'm saying. <clears throat> What's no, no surprise. Truth has enemies. It just does. Now, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the truth. And he even said the world hated him. Truth has enemies. Jesus Christ is the truth. John 1.14, he is full of truth. Uh, I, John 14.6, he is the truth. Uh, John 18.37, he speaks the truth. Uh, 2 Samuel 7.28, his words are perfect. He cannot lie. Titus 1.2, Hebrews 6.18. Jesus Christ is truth. He is truth. The Spirit of God is truth. John 14, 17 calls him the Spirit of truth. He shall testify of Jesus in John 15, 26. He will guide us in all truth. He is called the Spirit of truth. So we have the Savior who's called, who's called the truth, and we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us who is the truth. His Spirit called the Spirit of truth, and he will testify of Jesus Christ who is the truth, and he will guide us into all truth, John 16, 13. You see that? God's all about truth. Truth, truth, truth. So we have true source is Jesus Christ. The source of truth is the spirit of truth. The source of truth is the word of God. Psalm 119, verse 151. Psalm 119, verse 151. The Bible says here, Psalm 119, verse 151. It says, Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. They're all truth. And then 1 Timothy 3.15 says, the church is the home base of truth. The church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. See, God's all about truth. And that's what you should be all about. You should all be about truth. Yeah, we should love people. And we should be try to be uh, an encouragement to people. And we should be willing to help anybody that comes our way. We should not hate anybody at all. <clears throat> we can hate what they do. But we should not hate people. We should love people. God so loved the world. But I'll tell you what, I'm not going to compromise my relationships and my beliefs and how I, and how I look at what people are doing. Uh, I'm not going to compromise. I, there's truth. 
I'm not changing that for anything. And I esteem truth way higher than anything else. I want you to go to Psalm 138. I want you to look at Psalm 138. Now, it is, it is a fact, it is the truth, that the Bible is the Word of God. There's no doubt about that. And the Bible says here in Psalm 138, verse 2, I will worship toward thy holy temple, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word, which is the truth, above all thy name. See, but yet people will, people will compromise to uh, what the Word of God says just so they don't hurt people's feelings. You see, no, uh-uh. more important than people's feelings is the truth. Amen. There's nothing more important than the truth. Now, we are to speak the word, the word of truth in love. We are always to do that. But you don't compromise for anything. You see, I've said a lot of things this morning uh, already that probably go against the grain of some, but I'm telling you the truth. And I'm not going to compromise truth. You might say, well, I'm not going to come back to church. Hey, I hate for you to even think that, but I'm not going to compromise truth for that. I'm just not. Well, you say, I give a big amount of money and I just won't come back. I'm sorry about that, but I'm not going to change the truth or compromise the truth for that. I just won't do that. Nope. I want to make sure that when I stand behind this pulpit and, and get it, put, put my mouth in front of this microphone, that when I preach the word of God, that you're going to get the truth of God. You see, it's so important. So important. We are uh, to stand. We have the Jesus Christ as the truth. We are the spirit, have the spirit of truth living inside us. We have the word of truth, the Bible. We go to the ch- a church that is true. <clears throat> and, and we are also channels of truth ourselves. We are, we are not the truth, but we are a channel for truth, to get, get the truth to someone else. And 1 Timothy 2.4, we are to speak truth. We are to speak it. It's so important. Now, <clears throat> we need to think about that when it comes to our life. Truth cannot be changed. All right, It is exactly what God says. And, and we have to believe what we believe because of the truth. Now, you're gonna you're gonna face a crossroads in your in your life, right? You're you're gonna be you're gonna be one that says, well, you know what? I don't really care uh, about uh, what is really what is really what's right or wrong. I just take people for what they are. I take churches for what they are. There's good in all churches. There's good in all beliefs. There's good in all religions. I, I just accept anybody the way they are. Uh, live and let live. Whatever they want to do, that's fine. There's people that you you you're, maybe you're like that. God's not like that, but maybe you're like that, all right? Then there's other people that say, well, you know, I believe the Bible's true, but I'm willing to accept other thinkings, other philosophies. Some people don't even care. They, they don't think the Bible's any more true than anything else. Some people say, well, I think the Bible's true, but eh, I can see where there's other things too. But then there's the people that stand with God. There's truth and there's error. And you need to plant yourself on the side of truth. And don't compromise for any reason. I'm telling you, it'll help you out so much. It'll definitely eliminate any kind of confusion in your life. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> it'll be a real blessing to you if you'll do that. So I'm asking you this morning, will you believe the truth? Okay, will you believe the truth? Well, you say, what should I believe? <clears throat> you believe Jesus Christ. You believe the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit. You believe the word of truth, which is the Bible. And you believe what's preached from this pulpit, because this pulpit is the home base of truth. It's the pillar and ground of the truth. You see? <clears throat> you just need to say, okay, I'm just going to believe <clears throat> that. Stand, believe it? Stand by it. Stand by it. I'm not budging. I'm not budging. I'm a very stubborn man. Okay? I am. I'm a very stubborn man. If you ever try to challenge me on what I believe, I'm a very stubborn man. I'm not going to budge. I'm not going to budge for you. I'm not going to budge for anybody. Okay? I don't care who you are. I'm not going to move. I don't care what you threaten me, and I've been threatened before. I am not going to budge. You know why? Because I'm standing right on the path of truth. 
You see, you you know what you you know. What? Okay, I got this note here. I want to read it to you. Dear sweetheart, thank you. For, oh, that's wrong note. Sorry about that. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> 1987, I became pastor of Maranatha Baptist Church in Winchester, Indiana. I was 31 years old, going on 32. And I had, a, I had an assistant pastor and his wife, and eventually they surrendered to become missionaries to Australia. We support them now, the Abrils. She came probably, I don't know, 12, 13 years later, after 1987, when I first became her pastor. She, they had been on the mission field for a while, and she came, they came to visit our church in Missouri. She gave me this note after the weekend was over. She said, thanks, pre and at this time I was 45, let's see, yeah, I was about 45, 46 years old, and I've been pastoring since 1987, so about 13 years. She said, thanks, preacher, for keeping going through the years. You preach it just like, oh, this was, I'm sorry, I was, I was wrong. You preach it just like you did 19 years ago. This was 2006. It was great to hear you preach today. And she signed her name. Now, <clears throat> I want to be the kind of Christian that when you, when you hear that Pastor Richter died, you can look back on my time here at Liberty Baptist Church and you can say, you know what? He never changed. He never changed. And maybe if, if God works it out someday where I retire from the ministry, if that works out, and yet, and if I retire, I'll probably still preach, you know, preach to different churches, just guest speaker. Maybe you'll get a, a CD of mine, or maybe you'll hear, hear a sermon of mine, you'll say, wow, he's not, at 89 years old, he sounds the same as he did when he was here with us. See? You know why? I, there's a good chance that's going to happen if I just stand on where I stand right now, yeah. in the truth. I don't see any reason to change. And I don't see any reason to listen to anybody that wants to challenge what I believe because it's the truth. Why am I going to listen to sit there and listen to somebody try to talk to me about their false beliefs when I already have the right belief? Why do I want to hear that? Now, if they come to me and they want to learn and they want me to teach them, that's fine. But if they want to argue with me, I don't got time to argue. I don't got to waste my time. I already got the truth. You're not going to budge me. Why should I budge? Why, if I'm standing in the right place, why well, do I want to move over to the wrong place? You see? I don't understand why Christians want to walk around day after day on this planet being wrong when they could be right. You just stand with the Son of God who is the truth. You let the Spirit of truth who lives inside you guide your life. You keep yourself in, uh, uh, buried and studying and living the word of truth, and you make sure that you go to a church of truth. And you can build your life on that and, be, and live that way the rest of your life, and the blessings of God will come pouring down on you because God is all about truth. You see, you want to enjoy the love of God? You want to enjoy the mercy of God? You want to enjoy the blessings of God? You want to enjoy the serving, serving the Lord? Truth is where all that comes. Walking in truth. So stand by it. Don't change. And then will, will you, I'm asking you this morning, will you defend the truth? Will you defend it? I am not going to let people sit in my presence and speak things that are not right about God. I'm just not. I don't care who they are. I'm not going to let them do it. Okay? I may not get in an argument with them, but I'm going to at least say to them, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm going to defend the truth. I'm not going to budge from it, all right? I see so many preachers going off and taking their churches off on the wrong path and to paths they are going to lead to false beliefs. And, I, and I'll tell you what, they come to me and try to say, criticize me for, for where I'm standing. I'm not going to back down from that. I'm going to defend the truth. But you know what we ought to do? Two, two things more important than all that, besides believing it, live it. We ought to live the truth. Our life ought to be real. And it will be real if it's based on truth. Live the truth and then spread it. So many poor people out there, they're looking for truth. They want truth. We've got it. Let's not hold it in. Let's not keep it to ourselves. Let's spread it. Let's spread it. That's why, I'll tell you what, I want to give every, every bit of change I can give to the change offering to get the word of truth into the hands of people that need it. 
Got a, a nice little testimony I'm going to read tonight about that from somebody that actually got a Bible from us, <clears throat> from, from what, what churches like us are doing. But I'm, going to, I'm going to do all I can to spread the truth to people that need it. So this week as you go out into this world, will you believe the truth, stand by it, defend it, live it, and spread it? I think you ought to make a commitment to that. I think you ought to make a commitment to God. You can kneel at your seat. You can kneel at this altar. Make a commitment to God. Say, Lord, thank you for the truth. Thank you for your son who is the truth. Thank you for the spirit of truth that lives inside me. Thank you for the word of truth, the Bible. Thank you for a church of truth. Now, Lord, help me to believe it. Help me to stand by it, defend it, live it, and spread it. And then lastly, I want to say this. Do you know? Do you have the truth about going to heaven? There's a truth about going to heaven. There's a lie. The lie about going to heaven is you get there by being good. You get there by being baptized. You get there by joining the church. You see? Or being a member of some religion. That's a lie. The truth about heaven is you get there one way. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. Where's the Father? He's in heaven. No man comes to the Father but by me. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You've got to come to him. Why? Because he, he's the one that came to earth. He's the one that died for your sins. You can't get to heaven with your sins. They've got to be paid for. There's a punishment. There's justice. God's a God of justice. And there's a penalty on your sin, which is death and hell. And that's got to be paid for before you die, or you're going to go to hell after you die and pay for it yourself. And Jesus Christ paid for that for you when he came to earth and died on the cross and bought you the gift of eternal life so you wouldn't have to earn your way to heaven. It's a gift that God wants to give you. He rose from the dead to prove he was the true God, the Son, and the Savior. And if you'll just ask him to be your Savior, he will save you and give you eternal life. That's the true way to heaven. There is no other way. If you haven't come his way, how about coming this morning? And let us take the Bible and show you from the Bible how you can be saved. How about the truth about baptism? Some of you have been saved, but you've not been baptized since you got saved. The truth about baptism is it doesn't get you to heaven. It doesn't wash away your sins. The truth about baptism is it's just a picture of the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, and it's something that God wants us to do to outwardly profess our faith after we're saved. If you've not been baptized after your salvation, you need to do that. Take care of that today. All right? That's the truth. Make sure you are going to follow the truth. How about the truth about living life? Are you living the truth? Are you living the truth? Is your life just full of truth? Is your life based on truth? Everything you do, where you work, how you work, how you spend your money, how you treat your wife, how you treat your husband, how you treat your kids, how you treat your parents, how you treat your friends, is it based on truth? Think about that. Everything about you ought to be truth. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us the truth. Lord, help us to take what we heard this morning and decide that we are going to believe the truth and stand by the truth and defend the truth and live the truth and spread the truth. And we're going to, all, we're going to be all about truth. Help us to do that. Make a commitment to the truth itself this morning. <clears throat> truth has fallen all over the place. It's been rejected and been replaced with so many things that are false. Lord, help us to stand by the truth. We have it. We've got it available to us. Help us to accept it and put it into practice in our life. Thank you for loving us. Lord, thank you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. How many say this morning, preacher? <clears throat> um, okay. <clears throat> someone, if you're here this morning, you might say, someone might say, preacher, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I want to be saved. I really want to be saved. I want to go to heaven when I die, but I'm not sure I would right now. If I could know how to be saved, I'd like to see that this morning. But as I sit here today, if I was to pass away in my seat, I don't know where I'd go. I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. If that's you, you raise your hand. I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. Heads about eyes closed. If you, how, many, how many say, Pastor, I know for sure I'm going to heaven because somebody one day took the Bible and showed me from God's word, the word of truth. They showed me the true way to heaven, and I accepted Jesus as my Savior. And I know for sure, without a doubt, if I was to die right now, I'd go there. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I know for sure I'm going there. Heads about eyes closed. Just a moment, we're going to have a song of invitation. And when the song begins, if you're not sure you're saved, please... I beg you, one human being to another, leave your seat, walk up, this, walk up this aisle when the song begins, and tell Brother Kevin, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I want to see the true way to heaven, as it says in the Bible. If you tell him that, he'll help somebody take the Bible and show you God's way to heaven, which is the true way. If you've been saved but not baptized, 
not baptized the Bible way, the true way, come up and tell Brother Kevin, I'd like to get baptized the Bible way, the true way. <clears throat> I like to do it the way the Bible says to do it. If you're a Christian this morning, you're not living life in a true way. You're, you're compromising the truth. You're, may, you're maybe practicing a few things, Christianity, but other things, really not so. Uh, you're not living your life according to truth. It's not based on truth. You, you're not standing by it. Maybe you're not defending it. Maybe you're not spreading it like you should. Why don't you come up and tell God this morning, I'm changing. I'm changing all that. And I'm going to be a person of truth. Someone who believes it, stands by it, defends it, lives it, and spreads it. Let's all stand. Heads, bowed, eyes closed. You obey the Holy Spirit as he talks to you this morning. Do what he says.